Hi, I'm Jeff Murrah, and I want to welcome you to True Texas History, where today we are going to be talking about the second Texas lunette at Vicksburg. I know that sounds like a mouthful, but I think you'll enjoy the story. Um, the story of the second Texas lunette uh, goes back to the siege of Vicksburg and uh, the battle there at the second Texas lunette occurred on May the 22nd, 1863. And it was quite an intense battle. Um, but before I get into the battle, I want to go ahead and tell you a little bit about the second Texas, uh, the second Texas infantry regiment. Uh, when the men of Texas uh, heard that there was going to be war, a lot of people volunteered. And the first group of men that volunteered became the 2nd Texas Infantry. And their original responsibility was to guard uh, the northern parts of the Texas coast. And they were headquartered there at Galveston. They actually billeted in the, uh, some of the cotton warehouses there. Now, when they assigned the various military units, uh, it was fairly arbitrary. That's why uh, the first regiment that signed up was not always the first, te well, it wasn't the first Texas. And uh, many times the first people signed up, they got a number later on. So don't let the numbers fool you thinking that uh, that's the order in which they signed up. That's not the case. Now, what was amazing about the second Texas is that it had the sons from uh, many of the prominent early Texas families. And it was led by uh, Colonel Moore initially. Uh, I mean, you had the uh, Sam Houston son and you had uh, several other uh, sons of prominent Texans. Uh, that fought in the second Texas and uh, they had already seen a lot of heavy action uh, prior to uh, the engagement there at Vicksburg. They had fought uh, there at Shiloh uh, and in the Battle of Corinth, uh, that's where uh, Colonel Moore was killed. Uh, in that battle, uh, they were attempting to reach a, a Union fortification and in the process had five color bearers shot from, uh, killed uh, in the process of advancing the colors. And uh, while defending their position, the brave Colonel Moore uh, was killed himself. And he was replaced with uh, Ashbel Smith. Now, Ashbel Smith he had already gained prominence. Uh, he had served as an ambassador from the Republic of Texas to England. Uh, he had been sent to negotiate treaties with uh, Indians during the days of the Republic. Uh, yeah, he, he was quite an orator and uh, an accomplished doctor. I believe at that point uh, he was already uh, in his 50s or early 60s. So <clears throat> he had been around a while, and uh, the men respected him. This is a man that uh, had roots back to the Republic of Texas, uh, and he was the one leading them uh, there at uh, the Battle of the Second Texas Lunette. Now, after the war, he negotiated some of the peace terms uh, for Texas, and became the president on the first Board of Regents for the University of Texas. Hey, and he was also on the Board of Directors for um, what became uh, Prairie View A&M out there at Hempstead, um, you know, because they wanted to see to it that the blacks were educated as well. So, <clears throat> Ashbel Smith uh, was an educated man who accomplished a lot, and he led the men in the battle. Now, uh, in the battle, what happened on the morning of May 22nd, um, General Grant decided to launch an assault against the defensive positions there at Vicksburg, and it just so happened right in about the center of the line on uh the road to the ferry was this uh, crescent-shaped fortification manned by men of the 2nd Texas. 
and um, on the Union side, uh, the soldiers were in high morale. Uh, they had uh, a good breakfast, and they really thought, oh, we're going to mow over these rebels and be in the city before lunch. Uh, in fact, you know, as they were marching to uh, the front, uh, they passed General Grant, and they started chanting in unison, hard tack, hard tack, hard tack. Uh, you know, which was part of their uh, military rations. And uh, they charge a position uh, there at the 2nd Texas Lunette and were pushed back. Uh, the men of the 2nd Texas, uh, they fought uh, valiantly. They knew how to fight in combat. These were experienced men. Uh, they had um, their main rifle, and then they had, uh, each of the men had uh, several muskets beside them. So, I mean, they would literally you know, shoot once, uh, put it down, grab another one, shoot, grab another one, shoot, grab another one, shoot, uh, while some of their compatriots were busy loading uh, the weapons, uh, and with that type of firepower, they were able to uh, outshoot uh, their attackers. Now, at the same time, the uh, Union cannons uh, were firing on the position, and the men talked about uh, the earth rumbling, where it felt like it there was literally you know, boom, 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 like a heartbeat. They felt like it was a living thing uh, as they were... Uh, in the midst of having to fight back uh, this attack that was coming against them. Um, now, uh, strangely enough, um, one of the men from the 99th uh, Illinois uh, managed to reach the top of their works uh, and plant the Union flag before he was captured. He had not even been wounded once. Uh, and the men find, found this awfully ironic, having lost, you know, five of their color bearers at the Battle of Corinth. Um, and the men, uh, strangely enough, uh, had been cheered on by the men of the 2nd Texas in his efforts to do it. They respected the bravery of this man uh, in what he had done. Now, he went to the prisoner of war camp. Uh, and was later paroled, and to his surprise, he ended up winning a Congressional Medal of Honor for that action. Of course, you know, after a war, they usually give those things out to reward people that did things that they felt were important. Uh, the men of the 2nd Texas uh, went on and repelled all attacks that came against them that day uh, because General Grant had hoped that, you know, with this massive onslaught that... Uh, he would knock him out of the position. I mean, literally, uh, they were repelling, uh, you know, this one Texas regiment was repelling attacks uh, from brigade size uh, units coming at him. Now, brigade is when you take several regiments and put it together. Um, you know, it varied from, you know, uh, four or five uh, regiments. So they were, the, Second Texas was facing a group of men that was four to five times uh, their numbers, and they were still able to repel them. Uh, and that takes uh, some strong leadership, which was exhibited by Ash Bell Smith, uh, who remained cool in the midst of all the struggles that uh, the men endured that day. Um, but that's what happened uh, May the 22nd back in 1863. Uh, it's one of those things worth remembering. Uh, you know, like I say, it's a, it's a weird name, Second Texas Lynette, but what happened there was uh, quite an act of heroism and bravery and courage. Um, and uh, let me go ahead and add that William P. Rogers who was the first colonel of the second Texas. He was a very good friend of uh, Sam Houston. And uh, many of the men in the second Texas had actually gone to uh, what amounted to the Texas Military Institute. Um, and uh, that was the cream of the crop. 
and uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, by the time um, the war ended, they uh, that whole regiment was pretty decimated. Uh, after Vicksburg surrendered, they spent some time in the prison camps. Uh, and then they regrouped uh, in Houston, uh, Galveston area later on. And uh, they fought at the Battle of Caney Creek, you know, uh, repelled another invasion uh, of Texas, attempted invasion of Texas there at Caney Creek. Uh, now that's a battle I'll need to spend some time talking about sometime in the future. Well, thank you for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend. And uh, until next time, vaya con Dios, my friends. Goodbye.